Hello and welcome to the show for our second episode of the Canyon Rally. We are going to have a muscle car. Yes, the Barstow. I've gone for the Night Snake variant of this one, which is uh, one of the highest sort of performance variants of the car, hoping that it will be able to go relatively quick down this course. Now, there's plenty of power in the car. However, that's uh, not the only thing that's needed. The brakes are very, very important around this course and it uh, has to deal with some of the large bumps and jumps, such as this crest at turn one, which I turned it a little bit too soon on, end up landing on the dirt. That upsets things and then we're a little bit on our roof. Yeah, that was, uh, it wasn't the greatest of lines from me through that, uh, through that section. There's actually a little bit more turning from the car than I was expected as we end up. I suspect there will be many cars end up in that uh, little area over the course of this series. The next round things went a little bit better, although again managed to uh, get things slightly wrong. Of course you can get this car oversteering quite a lot and in doing so I did yeah, ended up across some rocks, and that will tear the front wheels apart. We made it quite a lot further on the next one. Actually made it down to the very, very fast S-Bends. However, yeah, getting out in trouble across them. You don't necessarily sort of see it as much. You like, think you can get away with a little bit more, but uh, no, they are vicious out uh, off the road there. It will ruin your car. Now sometimes crashes are less than spectacular on here. Normally they tend to go for the very spectacular accidents, but this one we got a big twitch under braking. I saved the car from plummeting off the course, but I couldn't stop it from spinning. This time out we may have already taken the rear bumper off after out braking ourselves into the uh, second corner, but it was coming across the dirt section that caused issues. I've been tending to stick more to the right to try and get a smoother run. That time though, too far to the right and uh, as it bounced its way across there he snapped the drive shaft the first car to uh, have a drive shaft ruined at uh, that particular section down towards one of the slower corners on the track and too much speed on the way i was trying to get away and trying to trying to carry as much speed as i could through there but that was too much we just started understeering off towards the outside and yeah, putting power down with a wheel almost dipped over the edge was never likely to end particularly well. Another big oversteer moment for the uh, Night Snake. I just about caught it, but uh, again, it twitched on me and I was well out of position, especially with wheels across the dirt. Never a good place to be and the car would end up in trouble. However, considering that, well, this is not really a vehicle designed for rallying it actually did a remarkably good job of surviving this course where we had the rally cars having issues for example across this crest here the night snake was fine you know yeah okay on this particular one the front end did bounce up in the air quite heavily and there was always a fear that that could snap suspension and bits and pieces when it come back down to land it was absolutely okay with that in this next section the jump that we are coming up to here caused many issues for the rally cover perhaps the larger wheelbase and a little bit more weight in the night snake did it some good it's a heavy landing yes it clonks on the front uh, but the car is still in working order and it doesn't get thrown about and thrown off course so you can keep everything all together as we come around the uh, pond making sure to get the second part of that hairpin sorted out to cross the dirt section this time not quite going as far to the right we don't want to snap the drive shaft again big big break down towards this next turn Probably on the easier braking zones because it is straight and there's only one big bump on the inside and normally or you should be slowed down by the time you uh, get to uh, get to that bump so yeah while it is a big braking zone probably one of the biggest on the track or certainly from the highest speed it is uh, a bit easier when there are less bumps to deal with then we have a nice high speed section you see the car bucking from side to side across the bumps there i run it very very wide but we keep it on the tarmac. Yeah, there's not very much margin for error down that part of the course. And then we are across the line. Although just, just before we got to the line, we started oversteering. And then as we crossed it, there's a little bit of a, um, a bump in the tarmac. That was enough just to lose the back end of the car and go soaring off. Again, a relatively mundane crash, if you will. But that snapped the drive shaft as well. Um, but we could roll it back to the... <laughs> 
finishing position. Some of the damage on the front of the car, I think a little bit was potentially done from the landing of the, the bridge jump. The rest of it, though, from that uh, small excursion off of the track. Yeah, the muscle car fared really well. I, I really thought we'd have a lot more troubles getting it down here. Up next, we go to the Roma. Gone for the uh, Fire Chiefs Roma, just for something a little bit different. Now, this vehicle is incredibly tough. I have messed about with it a fair bit in Beam, and it has been through a hell of a lot of punishment and kept working. However, the downsides of vehicles like these, while we've got the suspension to deal with the bumps, the suspension to deal with the jumps and so on that uh, th this course holds, I had lots of concerns about it rolling over. These high-riding off-road vehicles, when you take corners at speed, have a tendency to want to fall over. So, yeah, that, uh, that was what I was fearing. Now, this is not going to have the same speed that we got from the Night Snake, and the crest at uh, Turn 1 was, well, no real problem. Absolutely flat out in the aroma. Things would go a little bit uh, bad <laughs> further down. I locked the brakes up and couldn't get off the brakes in time. We'd lost control of the car and, sure enough, went plummeting off the mountain. It's a tough braking zone, a very tough braking zone to get right to that one. However, the Roma was amazingly dealing with this course very, very well as we come in towards the tunnel. I turn in a fraction too soon and the Roma will go over. I rolled the covers, I think it was, at that point. Yeah, if you flip that inside of banking, that will be enough to send the cars tumbling. But here's the impressive thing. That was a big tumble. That was a big tumble down the side of the mountain. However, the only message that popped up was a radiator damaged. So I was to uh, sort of pull the car about, try and get it back on to its wheels, because I was hoping that it might still be working. Did have to slightly pull it by the door, but never mind. The Roma was back on its wheels, and indeed... It's still a functioning vehicle. Most impressively, it's not just the engine, you know, that is working and driving wheels. It actually still has fully functioning steering. It just tumbled off the side of a mountain, and it's still going, and it's still actually climbing its way relatively well up this hillside. That is impressive. That is seriously... I mean, the chassis is all bent to hell, but it's still working. It's a really tough vehicle, this one. Now, uh, speaking of the uh, suspension, well, we can see it's very, very comfortable with dealing on that uh, jump. It's uh, a lot of speed, however, a little too much of it in towards the next corner. I was expecting a lot more of that from the Roma. I was expecting a lot more of the car wanting to tumble over as I tried to take these corners. I think there is some sort of slight bumps on the inside of that turn that got the car up onto its side, but it really didn't take long. It really wasn't too difficult to get a run out of this car. It was quite nice to have a vehicle that could deal with all of the, the demands of this circuit in many ways. You know, the, the likes of the, the Night Snake and even the, the Rally Coffet to an extent. Uh, their suspensions just weren't quite as comfortable dealing with the very, very heavy landings that, uh, that you got. But this absolutely no problem. In fact, I think it will become the fastest car I have dared take over this uh, bridge jump because I could just be flat out in it. Everything else I've had to lift and, and coast and so on about 65 miles an hour is all it dare do. This one here, you can keep it flat out and it'll be absolutely okay on the landing. The difficulty then is you do have to really work to get the car slowed down for <laughs> the next corner because, well, you are carrying quite a lot of speed and because the landing is so lovely and smooth, that doesn't shrug off any speed either as we round the pond corner towards that little dirt section. Again, there was no issues with the Roma. could be flat out across there. It's never going to have a problem with that particular section uh, up towards the cave now. Got to be careful not to clip the inside. That's definitely something that you had to uh, try and avoid with this car, and probably will be something to try and avoid in general with vehicles. The corner does fall away very, very quickly, and there's a very steep kind of banking on the inside that will probably get many a car into trouble. Now, this was another section that I had fears about. I mean, these are relatively high-speed corners that we are throwing the car through, and they are not uh, exactly smooth corners, especially not on the inside lines. However... The Roma was okay. It didn't get thrown about too much by the bumps. It didn't get put up onto its side. And as it comes around the final corner to cross the line, yeah, 
uh, Im impressive impressive handling of the course. It's naturally it hasn't got the same power of the uh, the vehicle, some of the vehicles that have gone before, so it's not going to have quite the same speed, but the suspension did a very very good job of dealing with the nasty nasty demands of this uh, of this course. I was impressed. I really thought it was going to fall over a lot. I really thought we were going to have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, accidents with the Roma, but that was simply not the case. I was trying to do some celebratory donuts. It was having none of it. There were to be no celebratory donuts for the the Fire Chief Roma, and reverse was a little bit of a pain as well. But uh, yeah, impressed me. It really did. And finally, keeping with the emergency services theme, we have got a police car. But this one is the Ford L LTD, I believe, sort of a classic American police car. Now, didn't quite know what to expect from this one. I can't have it as a manual. There, there wasn't an option for a manual gearbox, so this will be the first automatic car to go down the course. Of course, though, we also do have none of the assist. Acceleration actually wasn't too bad as we climb up towards the crest at uh, turn one, and it dealt with the landing. It didn't get a huge jump off of that section. It wasn't quite going fast enough to get a big jump. Landing was okay. The brakes, though were a little bit more of a problem. It doesn't really get slowed down very well. And that's, that, that, that braking zone into the second corner is tough. With good cars, with this, yeah, it's a lot of problems. There is also quite a bit of understeer as things go wrong coming out of the early chicane and there is a lot of fire coming out of the Ford as we tumble our way down the canyon, managing to smack the back of the car at all possible opportunities. Now we're just going for cartwheeling and making a little ball of metal really out of the Ford to eventually come to a rest, a very, very squished car. Yeah, not a good place to get a, a bit too much, a bit too much understeer. And the fuel tank in this was surprisingly easy to rupture and just engulf the car in flames. Managed a little better the next time around. I was concerned about the suspension on this dealing with, well, this jump. But it was 67 miles an hour across the uh, across the jump. The landing was initially okay, but we punctured a tyre. And in puncturing a tyre, I couldn't actually get the car back across. It kind of destroyed some steering. I couldn't get the car back across to the... Uh, kind of left hand side and then it starts again tumbling down the mountain more fire coming out of the Ford a heavy impact as it uh, goes across the road this time not quite such a ball of metal uh, just a lot of fire in in the vehicle it did, did not end quite so well for the Ford that time out but uh, we were back to the jump again, you know, around the 60 mile an hour mark. It was, if we didn't punch the tyres on landing, it was actually relatively okay dealing with that section. Unfortunately, again, trying to slow it down was a big problem. The brakes just weren't particularly powerful. And into these big, big, tricky braking zones, that caused some, some issues. Again, the car did actually amazingly survive this one. I was trying to uh, see if I could get it free on his own steam. Uh, almost, but uh, yeah, not, not quite on that one. Still, the car survived working was uh, quite impressive. Getting it slowed for the second quarter was equally difficult. I thought I'd got it sorted. I thought I actually got away with that one there as well. But <laughs> I was turning the car left and it just was ignoring my instructions. It was only then that I realised we'd completely and utterly destroyed the uh, the front <laughs> front right wheel was wiggling around. So yeah, clipping that barrier is uh, not a particularly good idea. I want to stay as far away from that as we possibly can. And while the car was taking a little bit of damage on that landing, it, again, it could have done a lot worse. I was almost getting the breaking point right for <laughs> for that section. Again, we managed to rupture the fuel tank, though this time no massive fire. It probably wouldn't have mattered too much. The car is going to end up in the pond down there, and I believe the engine was actually still working on this one, quite surprisingly, really. Uh, down towards the cave on the next run, still just about fighting with the brakes. Not quite got the uh, grip to get turned. A very, very similar accident 
to the one that uh, that I had with the Night Snake. You're just trying to carry that bit too much speed, trying to get on the power that a little bit too soon. The understeer will catch you out and you'll end up in trouble. I do stop the car from going all the way down the mountain, but spin it in the process. Now, the high speed section would also prove to be a interesting challenge for the Ford. We've seen those bumps throwing cars about a fair bit, and this one's relatively fragile uh, front tyres and front suspension and so on. Just, it collapsed the the front, I think it was the front right tyre that went first, and when that went, we lost control and it went up the, the side of the mountain. Yeah, you really had to be careful. A little bit of luck and just generally avoiding any nasty potholes slash bumps slash ditches at anything really just to not do any excess damage to those front tires it wasn't too bad though as, as a car to get down here i thought it could have been a lot worse really for getting down the course uh, a lot of these vehicles uh, their suspensions are dealing a lot better with this course than I thought they might do initially, especially after the rally cover had some big problems with these uh, kind of landing zones. Yeah, the tyres were fragile in this car, but uh, aside from that, it wasn't too bad. The brakes took some getting used to. I was just sort of using different, slightly different braking points than I had with previous cars. But uh, once you'd learned the new braking points, it wasn't too bad. And you have to be very, very careful not to uh, lock all of the wheels up. I, I love how it loses the hubcaps as it uh, goes. And you often see them go catapulting past the vehicle as I'm trying to get it slowed down into these braking zones. The little dirt section was no problem for the Ford. At no point did I actually punch the tyres across that part, which is odd considering I took the drive shaft off the Night Snake at times. But uh, yeah, the, the tyres were okay through there. Then we get it slowed down into the hairpin. Actually a little late under braking, but do get the car turned and then put the power down. Again, off towards this high-speed section. I was rather, <laughs> was rather scared of taking this section in the Ford. It is a little quicker than the Roma. We were past 100 miles an hour, but have got to uh, slow it down. We simply don't have the grip, even if we uh, had the strength in the tyres to really attack that uh, corner. So, yeah, it's taking a little bit easy on the way in, but we get neatly through those turns as it runs up towards the line, and it will finish. It survived survived remarkably well yes there will be some damage on the car it doesn't have a lovely smooth landing across our bridge jump as you've got with the Roma you know, that's to be expected after all you see see the amount of ground clear as you have on the Roma makes sense that that can survive the jump and this thing well calm but it's mostly superficial damage on the car the rear bumper hanging off a bit the the bonnet is uh, slightly stuck up again i was trying for some celebratory donuts i think we have a very open diff didn't really work i do think on this run it was only very minorly but uh, in the landing of that jump i think i ever so slightly bent something in the steering something in the suspension the car was pulling ever so slightly it wasn't a major thing but the car was pulling a little bit towards the end of the run but uh, yeah, it was unfortunately only minorly. On to the times, and the Night Snake will go fastest of today's cars. It is quick enough to put it into second place, a 139.9 for a rear wheel drive muscle car down this rally course. That's pretty good going. The 800 series, massively powerful four wheel drive estate car, is uh, only a second down the road. So yeah, good job from the Night Snake, and certainly fared a lot better down this course than expected. Equally, the Roma fared, in fact, all of the cars fared a little better than expected. The Roma didn't fall over anywhere near as much as I was kind of slightly hoping it would do. It's time 149.2. Yes, it is a little bit down on the rally covered in the Lancia 037. It has the suspension to deal with the course, but doesn't have anywhere near the power, really, to keep up with, well, let's face it, the race cars. So, I think a respectable time from the Roma. And the Ford is down at the bottom of 153 point three the very poor brakes are what let that car down massively yeah you know the suspension dealt relatively well with the course all things considered however that is going to be it for this video guys as ever i will put links to all of the mods that i've used in the description so you can download them and have a go with them yourself but uh, thank you very much for watching and until next time uh goodbye